Hello, Steve Ashton, The Wizard of BC, continuing the video series CSM Hints and Tips. Fine tuning a circular sock knitting machine to knit successfully and reliably. This is Chapter 2 of CSM Hints and Tips, Knitting a Gauge Tube to ensure that the socks that you knit will always fit. Perhaps the most frequent question asked by new knitters is, how do I knit a sock that fits? Well, the problem begins with very few people today really know what size their foot is. This is because today shoes are not sized by one single shoe sizing method. In the US alone there are over seven different methods for sizing shoes. It's quite common for shoemakers to use their own unique method, one that only they use. So finding the right size shoe is about like buying blue jeans. One size by one maker may fit perfectly, but the same size made by another maker may not. At one time, if you wanted a pair of shoes, you would go into a shoe store. The salesperson would sit you down and measure your feet with a Brannock device. The Brannock device was, and to some extent still is, the standard shoe sizing device for high-end or custom shoes. The Brannock device measures the overall length of the foot, the width of the foot, and the length of the arch of the foot. At one time, everyone knew their shoe size expressed as a number and a letter. For example, 10D. The number 10 refers to the length, and the D refers to the width. But to save money, many shoes sold today are sized by length alone. If the size you see listed in a store is just a number, then that is only the length. This presents a problem for those who knit socks, as the width component of the size is missing in most shoe sizes today. And the width of a sock is just as important as the length. On a CSM, we crank more or fewer rows to change the length of the socks that we knit. And we change cylinders with more or fewer slots to change the width of the socks that we knit. This important width component is missing from most of the shoe size charts and the size comparison charts that you find on the web. The width component of the size also happens to be missing from almost all of the sock measuring tools that are available in the CSM community. So if you do not have a Brannock device, how do you measure both the length and the width of a foot to knit a sock? I'm now going to insert one of those little hints and tips that I promised. For the length, length go to your sock drawer and find a really comfortable pair of socks. Then get out your tape measure. Simply measure the length of the tube of your known sock. The tube is the part between the point of the heel and the point of the toe. For the width, measure around the widest part of your foot. This is usually around the ball of the foot. This is the circumference of your foot in inches or in centimeters. You can then duplicate the length and the width by cranking a specific number of rows on the appropriate cylinder. But how many rows and which cylinder? Well, that's the question, isn't it? To answer the question, we've got to go back to the basics of hand knitting that have been used for centuries. The tried and true method used in every knitting pattern book is to knit a gauge swatch. The swatch gives you both the number of rows per inch in length and in width. 
The reason that a gauge swatch is so important is the very basic premise that every hand knitter discovers really quickly. Every yarn is different and every yarn will knit differently. Even a different color dyed on the same base yarn will knit differently. Every hand knitter will also tell you that you cannot measure the gauge of the swatch until you've washed and blocked the swatch, which allows the yarn to bloom to its final size and shape. You wash your gauge swatch the same way that you're going to wash your socks. You do plan to wash your socks, right? Well, we in the CSM world do exactly the same thing when knitting on our machines. We simply call it a gauge tube. The gauge tube allows us to accurately and reliably determine the gauge or the length in rows per inch of our knitting and the width of the tube that we will knit. Perhaps the most common mistake that new CSM crankers make is to try to adjust their machine based on the visual look of their stitches. To look while still on the machine and before washing like the stitches found in commercial socks. Well, the problem with that is that while the knitting is still on the machine, it's being stretched outward by the cylinder and pulled down by the buckle weights. And the knitting has not yet been washed. You cannot tell visually before washing what the finished knitting will look like or what the gauge of the knitting will be. And this is why, in my opinion, knitting a gauge tube is the whole secret to knitting a sock that fits. Now, are you ready for the cool part? Do you remember the missing part of most shoe sizes today? The width? Not only does knitting a gauge tube give you the final stitch gauge, but it also gives you the width. So let's knit a gauge tube. They're super quick and easy to do. Now I've set my camera a little bit closer to my machine to make it a little easier to see. The machine that I'm going to be using is an Erlbacher Speedster model and for this example I've put a 72 slot cylinder into the machine. Now there are two parts to knitting a gauge tube. The first is to establishing some zero or baseline machine settings. These are settings that can be recorded and returned to quickly and easily anytime they are needed. From the baseline settings, I can adjust the gauge a bit looser or a bit tighter according to my personal preference. The baseline weight stack on the buckle is just two of the three weights. And the baseline VCAM setting is found by turning the VCAM adjuster knob all the way to the top until it is flush with the top of the threaded rod. Now if you have a Laguerre style machine that has an arrow on the side, simply turn the knob all the way to the top until the arrow stops moving. Everything else is exactly the same. When you've got the knob at the top, simply put a dab of nail polish right here and that becomes the zero or the starting point of all of your VCAM adjustments. Now note, a CSM has a very, very accurate VCAM adjusting system built right in. There's no need to buy any additional tools. Each full turn of the knob will move the VCAM up or down the distance of one thread of this knob. On an Erlbacher, one thread happens to be equal to 0.05 of an inch. One quarter turn or one click is equal to 0.0125 of an inch. Or in metric, each full turn is equal to 1.27 millimeters. On each quarter turn, 0.3175 millimeter, a third of a millimeter. When an Erlbacher machine is tested at the factory, they set the top of the V-cam 
down from the top of the cylinder one and one quarter inches. And this is a good start to use if you would like. I'm going to set this one. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that should be pretty close to an inch and a half. And it is. Count the number of full and quarter turns as you turn the knob down. The final baseline setting is to establish a baseline stitch size for the yarn that you will be using. This baseline stitch size will be different for each yarn. To begin establishing a baseline stitch size, put on the cast on bonnet, crank a couple of rows of separator yarn, and just begin the working yarn that you'll be using to knit the sock with. At this point, begin cranking very slowly and you will be watching the stitches as they rise back up after passing under the V-cam. What you are watching for are the stitches to rise momentarily on the needles and then drop right back down to the top of the cylinder. If I can see the stitches rise momentarily and drop right back down to the cylinder, raise the V-cam by one half turn. I'm going to zoom in so you can see this very clearly. This is where we're watching right here. I, they, they rise and they drop so I'm going to ri raise the V-cam by one half turn. Then I'm going to crank again. They rise and they fall. Repeat this process. Crank, watch the needed stitches rise and fall, raise the V-cam in one half turn increments. At some point, you will see the stitches rise up on the needles, but not drop back down. There it is right there. You can see the needles are up above the top of the the top of the cylinder. If you see the stitches stay up on the needles, stop. You have just gone one half turn too much. Take out that last adjustment, half turn adjustment. Take it back down a half turn and then one half turn more for a total of one full turn. The machine should now be cranking flawlessly again. And this is the baseline stitch gauge for this yarn. Once the baseline stitch size is established, you can begin to knit your gauge tube. Knit. 10 rows of separator yarn. Notice the speed I'm cranking. This is my normal cranking speed. There's 10 rows and I stop here at my 6 o'clock. Cut the separator yarn. Take it off the machine. Bring the working yarn back. Reset your row counter. And you're going to crank 50 rows of working yarn. Now, I'm not going to take you all through all 50 rows. Well, yes, you know what? I think I will. Because I want you to see how long it's going to take to create a gauge tube in real time. There's 25.
30. Thirty-five. Forty. Forty-five. And fifty. At this point, cut your working yarn. Take it off the machine. Bring your separator yarn back. Crank 10 rows of separator yarn. and remove it from the machine. And there you have it. One gauge tube. Use your sewing machine to sew the ends with a zigzag stitch through the separator yarn so it won't unravel. But leave the tube open. You'll then wash the gauge tube just as you plan to wash your socks. After washing, measure and record the length in inches and the width. You're going to determine the number of rows per inch. Simply divide 50 rows by the length. For example, let's say that the gauge tube is four and a half inches long or 11.53 centimeters. In inches, 50 rows divided by 4.5 inches equals nine rows per inch. In metric, 50 rows divided by 11.43 centimeters equals 4.37 rows per centimeter. We can now answer the original question. How many rows do I knit to make a sock the correct size to fit my foot? Let's say, for example, that the length of the tube of your comfortable pair of socks was six inches. And from the gauge tube, we found that the rows per inch of the knitting is nine rows per inch. It's a very simple arithmetic problem to multiply nine rows per inch by six inches in length. How many rows do I need to crank? Answer, nine rows per inch times six inches, crank 54 rows. And we now have the answer for the missing part of the measurements. The width. Just like a hand knitter will cast on more or fewer stitches to change the diameter of the tube they knit, the number of slots on a CSM cylinder will determine the diameter of the tube that we knit. You can compare the measured circumference of your foot to the measured circumference of the gauge tube. But wouldn't it be so easy just to slip the tube right on your foot? You can instantly tell if the tube is too loose or too tight. Now you have knit a gauge tube. Please don't forget to record the results, the width, the length, and the number of rows per inch. We've now come to the end of chapter two, knitting a gauge tube to ensure that the socks that you knit will always fit. I hope that you'll join me as I continue this video series, CSM Hints and Tips.